and we're gonna and we're gonna and we're gonna Well, good, good morning, everyone. I'm Scott from the old Curiosity Shop. It's a cool, rainy morning here in the northern suburbs of Philadelphia. Uh, there's a train station not too far from here, but I decided I would drive anyway. I am at an estate sale, or at least I soon will be. They started giving the numbers away at 8 o'clock. The estate sale doesn't open until 9. I was expecting to get here at 8. But my wallet, keys, and eyeglasses were not cooperating. I know, put them down in the same spot and you'll never, you'll, you'll never lose them, but that doesn't work for me. I have never been to an estate sale where they give you such tiny little numbers. So here it is. I am number 19, which I'm not very happy about because I overheard the lady when she gave me the number telling some man they're going to let... 15 people in at a time so I'm not going to be unless there's always a few people that get the number then they go off to you know a pancake house or something and they don't get back in time and they they so maybe I will get in I'll film if I can it's a small house and I try to be respectful so I don't really know how much filming I'm going to be able to do but wish me luck Wonderful. well guess what I had a wonderful experience at the estate sale. I did no filming inside. It was an old house with small rooms. It wasn't terribly well lit and there were so many things to look at. Everything that I purchased is sitting right here on the windowsill and I'm getting ready to show you what I bought, including some vintage Christmas. So stay tuned for an estate sale reveal. Okay, everything that I am about to show you came from the estate sale. But let's go over here to the phonograph, phonograph, and take a look at two lamps that I bought. Now, when I bought these lamps, they had no shades. Not that. That I've had. These are my own shades, which I've placed on these lamps to give you the effect. I don't plan on using this old parchment shade with this lamp. It's too busy. It's not quite the right size, but I just wanted to have you get the effect. Uh, wonderful old 1930s parchment shade. But this is a glass lamp from, oh, around 1930. It's got a wonderful iron base here with a sort of an Art Deco design. And this glass has been reverse painted. Uh, I like the effect. And then we've got a nice old socket on the top. And once again, a nice little table lamp from right around 1930, maker unknown. This is a Who's glass, H-O-U-Z-E. Sometimes the label will say Who's X. Uh, Belgian family came to America, set up shop in Pennsylvania, just south of Pittsburgh. I forget the town. Maybe it's Who's pencil. No, 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 that's not right. Anyway, made of glass. Probably was a set of dresser lamps at one time, and we only have this one. I love Who's X glass. It's very collectible here on the base. This sort of clam broth color here. We have some uh, embossed roses, I think. Um, I'm going to sell this if it were black and green glass, which it was manufactured in black and green. I wouldn't sell it. I love black and green. But I'll be selling that one eventually, and this one I'll be keeping for now anyway okay so there we go two wonderful glass lamps again this one dates to uh the early 30s all right let's go over here to the window sill or window ledge and victor records 1924 catalog this was one dollar i'll try to tell you prices victor always released record catalogs there's a wealth of information and lots of photographs uh, in here too of the recording artists of those days. So uh, I do collect these old record catalogs. It's a great resource. Uh, mayonnaise set here, little uh, lusterware 
set and sadly on this I didn't notice in the house that there is a chip on it. It's right back here. The rim isn't chipped. It just goes, uh, well I should say the very edge. So you don't really see a chip on the edge but there is a chip on the inside. Uh, well we'll just put the uh, mayonnaise ladle right there and you won't see it. I had to get it because when do I find a matching set that's completely all together and as we can see absolutely a matching set that's been together all its life. This is also going to date to the 1930s. You see made in Japan on the bottom. This will be for sale. Beautiful colors there. Um, and then all of this ephemera. I, I got two boxes of ephemera and it was I was lucky to get these because um, 15, when I say ephemera, really just cards, mostly Valentine's. Some of these go back to 1899. And then over here are some religious cards, some Easter cards, some Christmas. That one's dated 1928. I'm not going to go through these now. We'll go through these some other time. The video would be just too long, but I promise to do a review uh, of all of these. Unbelievable. Look at this one here from the 1920s. Back up where you can see it. And we have some nice action here. I can't do it with one hand, but they, they go back and forth on this sort of tandem bicycle. And then over here, uh, I did place on the mantle a few more uh, of the Valentines that open up. They're very delicate, just amazing. I'll let you see a little bit of the detail. I know I'm going fast and, and you can't wait to see inside of these boxes. And as I said, I promise we will revisit these. Maybe on a snowy day in January, we'll pull these back out and get them ready for sale. I do plan on selling all of the Valentines probably uh, as we get closer to Valentine's Day next year. But right now I just don't have the time to go through all of these, so I will be putting them away. I couldn't believe it when she told me $15 was the price for the two boxes. And these are just loaded. And this stuff is old. As I said, some of these Valentines are actually dated 1899. I don't know if I'll be able to find one. Uh, you can actually tell by the, uh, there's no date on that one, but just look at this and they're in really good condition. So excited about that. I haven't had one of these before. It's a nice piece, probably from the 30s or 40s, judging by the color. It's a vase, American made. Uh, it says on the bottom, E&R, American Artware. There's a chip on the base, but we don't actually see it. So those are nice colors, sort of a cream and green color. That will be for sale in the old curiosity shop. How about a fancy cream and sugar set here? This is an open sugar. I don't believe this ever had a lid. There are ways to kind of figure that out, uh, but we won't go into it. Heavily encrusted in gold. There's the underplate. I didn't say underpants, but you thought I was going to. And look at it just shine and glimmer on this as the sun is coming in here this afternoon. And that's just absolutely beautiful. Boy, you could do a lot with that. It's very heavy and in good condition. I've got four bags of buttons. These uh, bags, let's see, I'm, I forgot to tell you prices. I think this was $5 for that set. I don't remember what I paid for all these buttons. We'll have to talk about these again later. Um, most of these look like they're going to be 19, 1930s into the 60s. Uh, and I know crafters and vintage clothing people love this kind of thing. Yes, yeah, I know, that's what I thought. And I'm probably going to, I don't know if I'm going to repackage these. Um, I'm certainly going to get them opened up because I did see some coin, coin, coin money, coins in some of these bags. So we'll have to see if there's any, how much money is in there. How would you sell them? Would you... Just put them up as is, each bag, I don't know. From the vintage kitchen, and some of these things I might keep. Now that lady, I don't know if I would eat a cake. She looks like 
Uh, she maybe wants to poison her husband. I don't know. She seems awful sinister looking, or maybe she's just really hungry and she wants to enjoy some cake herself. But um, sometimes old advertising can be a little scary. Very Art Deco bottle caps, and they're in there. That's an unopened box was a popular thing to do. That's going to date back to the 30s. This cake box might be late 30s into the 40s. And two tins here. We'll let you see those. Aunt Nelly. Harrisburg Grocery Company that has local interest. And all spi And by the way, there are... <laughs> the spices are here. I don't know that we would want to season our ham with this, but... You hear that? It's in there. I'm not going to shake this one, but you have to trust me, the uh, allspice is still in there as well. On top of this gadget is a, another piece of uh, Who's glass, and that is a little Scotty dog, or some type of terrier. We always go back and forth on that. And it's an ink blotter, not a rocking horse. This had two metal clips, a metal clip here and here, and it held the green blotting paper underneath. And of course, when you wrote with your fountain pens, you could, you know, blot the ink so it wouldn't smear. Uh, there was an elephant. There was, oh, a sailboat, and I can't remember what else. I think, well, I know the dog, and uh, he's got a little alley right there. I had to buy that for $5. It's the second one that I have, so... I may keep him or I might part with him. You knew it had to be a radio, right? You're right. All right, let's get these things out of the way and we'll just dig into this. Now, I'm not going to go into great detail about this radio set, although I could. I don't think most of you would be terribly interested. Uh, and uh, we're, not, we're not actually going to hear it play today. Let's get this off of the top. Okay, it's a little... Uh, Crosley 50. I don't know whether you can see there. Okay, it's a little Crosley 50 set. Now this came out uh, 19, uh, 1925. And it's a little one tube set. This cost about oh, 14 or $15 without the vacuum tube. And um, this is called a regenerative set. Now that's the circuitry and uh, invented by old Edwin H. Armstrong, who fought Lee DeForest for years and years and years, and then, of course, RCA. And a very tragic ending to, to his life, also invented FM. But, uh, so it was, Armstrong invented the, the circuitry. I think he received the patent around 1914, and then he licensed this to several radio manufacturers early in the 20s, mostly to help pay for his legal bills. And uh, it's, and you can see here, it's very, uh, there's nothing attractive. <laughs> well, the, uh, let's say the typical housewife of those days would not be thrilled to have this in her parlor or in her living room as they were being called at that time in many cases. We still didn't really know what radios were supposed to look like. This is, this is very early on, 1925. Very few people in this country had radios, but, uh, well, that's not necessarily true. Very few had radios in 1920, 1921. By 1925, we start to see radios starting to really infiltrate American homes. Uh, this set, as I said, a simple little regenerative set, one tube set. And uh, we'll take a look at the box. There's not much to it. And uh, the thing you worry about is mice getting in and building a little home. They, they tend to do that. That's a perfect hole for a mouse to get into. And if, it's a, he's a, if he's a fat mouse, I've seen where they'll chew it and they'll enlarge that hole and get in there and live and have a family. And uh, let's take a look inside the box. Woohoo! Now, when I saw it, I held my breath because 
if these things survive, you know, uh, some annoying child getting in in the 1950s, discovering it in Grandpa's attic, and then and then gutting it. You're in good shape. If it's gutted, we're not very happy about that. But this one, look there. We get inside. It's it. Ouch. <laughs> it's all there. Okay. This is where the warranty was that you could snap right off and send send that in. To get your warranty, which somebody did, my uh, focus isn't quite. Okay, so Crosley Radio Manufacturing Company, or Corporation, Cincinnati, and it's it's very simple circuitry here. We have one one of the old O one A tubes there, radiotrons. Uh, there's your grid leak way down there. Now I have not put a meter on any of this. I have no idea. We've got two of these old uh, spiderweb coils, they called them. Uh, one is the plate and one is the grid. And the funny thing, the tuning capacitor is what's called a book tuning capacitor here. Now it's, it just, these are two, some kind of, you know, synthetic plates. There's a piece of a mica in there as an insulator. And it's held in place by a spring. And uh, that's it. That's the, the, you could not get the, um, the inner, the inner, not interlocking, but a typical tuning condenser with all the metal plates, you couldn't get them in 1925. <laughs> this is how they did it in those old days. And we just, this knob on the front, we pull in and out to affect the regeneration there, and that's now this will only drive a little uh, high impedance headphone. You can't, there's no, we can't use a horn speaker. There's, we don't have electrodynamic speakers yet. And this is where we would connect. This is the output. And we would put our headphones here. I don't have a set here to show you handy. And then our two terminals for the batteries. Oh, we need six volts and I think about 22 volts. I could rig something up and get this thing going. Uh, that's a ray stat for the gain. That's probably antenna right there. That's our that's our coils for the grid and the and the plate. And then there's your tuning capacitor, and that's it. And we've got uh, the ground and the antenna. You got to have a good antenna and string up and string a ground. You could put that onto your uh, radiator pipe or a cold water pipe, something like that, in, in your house and get your headphones going and you're all set. Uh, Crosley, 1925 there. I'm going to get some headphones from out of storage and put a little battery pack together. And uh, at some point we'll fire this thing up and see what we get. As I said, I have not, uh, it should be okay. It's pretty, I don't think these coils are open. They shouldn't be. It's pretty good. You know, as I said, the mice, a mice, a mouse has not gotten in here and done any damage. Oh, one more thing I wanted to show you. I did, oftentimes the tubes are tested when they're sold and they write the date. And I won't pull that tube, well, let's pull that tube out of there. Uh, this set, as I said, dates to 1925, and we'll get this tube out of here, this old Radiotron. It's the short pin model, and this tube was guaranteed good. I love it. This tube has been inspected and in perfect condition by the Waco Electric Supply. I'm going to assume that's Waco, Texas. How this wound up in Philly, I don't know. 
and look at the inspection date, December the 10th, 1925. Undoubtedly, this was probably a Christmas gift uh, purchased in 1925. That is probably the original tube. As I said, this these were released in 1925. And that's, that's the tube that's been down in there almost 100 years, almost 100 years ago. And I'll uh, we'll put, put that back in there. So uh, I paid $50 for it and was thrilled to do so because of its originality and its completeness. They do sell online for about 50 bucks, rough shape. Everything complete as we've got here, Oh, about 150. They used to be, uh, all these old radios used to have more value 10, 15, 20, 25 years ago. There were more collectors of them. But uh, I was thrilled to get it, happy to pay $50 for it. And we're gonna revisit this thing soon. Maybe we can get old Russ Colombo. I don't think he was crooning in 1925, but we certainly can get uh, Vincent Lopez and his orchestra. And uh, maybe Ruth Edding singing over WLS in Chicago. We'll have to see about that. Oh, St. Louis woman, what have you got to lose? And without my man, I got the All right, let's see what else is on this countertop. Some vintage Christmas. I didn't get a whole lot, but what I was able to get, I was happy with. I did pay $5 for this box here, simply because I have never had these ornaments. Look down inside, there's a little tinsely surprise. You see that little sort of tinsel piece on the inside? I have not seen that. I don't know. I guess they're shiny brights. I know I, if I look closely on the, the cap there, it'll tell me. Uh, have you seen them before with the little tinsel on the inside? That's new to me, but I'm not a vintage Christmas expert, but I knew that that's something I hadn't normally seen. So I was excited to pay $5 and get uh, a few of those with the tinsel on the inside. and some without, so I thought, I thought that was an exciting find. And then the other Christmas items back here, uh, this is great, look at this old Easter candy box. Let me be very careful with this. Uh, we can see here, Easter greetings, six delicious Easter eggs. And this looks very much like something that would have come out in the 1930s. I know it's pre-war just based on the graphics on this cardboard. The United Candy Company, I'm sure we could look it up. Uh, but I'd, I'd almost bet my bottom dollar this is definitely prior to uh, 1940. So I don't really get a whole lot of Easter items. So I'm really excited about that. We have Noel here. Now that we'll revisit these at Christmas time. These do have damage. I won't go into the damage now. It's not important to talk about, but it's a set I haven't seen. Um, little Made in Japan Noel set there. They're not candle holders. And we all know about the naughty people that rearrange this so that it spells Leon instead of Noel. Yeah, Noel spelled backwards is Leon. A box of Christmas hooks. I think this was two dollars. The hooks are still in it. I love uh, my little ceramic uh, Thanksgiving turkeys. He is going to be a Japan piece in good shape. Uh, we see these a lot and I always sell them at Thanksgiving time. And I just had to, I mean how could you say no? Mr. and Mrs. Claus, although I'm somewhat suspicious, I think Santa Claus wasn't feeling well, 
and Mrs. Claus's sister is dressed up here because that's obviously a female body in a, in a male Santa Claus uh, outfit. If this is Santa Claus, he needs to lay off the biscuits because he's getting a little hippie down here. Uh, and he's rather fully bosomed there. Um, yeah, so we've got some something interesting going on here with Mr. with Mr. Claus, with Santa Claus, but you know, hey, well, whatever. A lot of a lot of hair. Uh, but how how could you say no to that? Um, I know these little metal stands back here are not old, but someone crocheted the, put this thing together probably in the 19 oh, I don't know, 50s, you think? 50s or 60s, maybe 40s, maybe 30s, I don't know. Here's one more Valentine delicate valentine that's hanging back here by a ribbon. Can you see this? This is old. Older than dirt. And I just want to just let that hang there and just be very careful with it. So that's it everybody. Backing up again. I told you what I paid. Uh, minus the uh, item that's out in my truck that I'll have to show you some other time. Well, that's it. It was a wonderful day at the estate sale, and I can't wait sometime in the future to get into all these Valentines and show you. And we're going to revisit the old Crosley Radio at some point. Hey, everyone. It's a great day. I hope you're enjoying it. I'm Scott from the Old Curiosity Shop saying thanks for watching, and so long for now.